God is good. And we're so thankful again uh, to be here in the house of the Lord and be among God's people. And we do greet you in the name of Jesus, and we thank God for all of you that are with us this evening. And uh, we know that uh, the Lord is blessing you. He's meeting your needs because the Lord said he would supply all of our needs. And that takes care of everything. Amen? Amen. And that's all. All means all. <laughs> and so we are just thankful. And we're looking to the Lord to supply all of our needs. And we believe that Whatever we need, it's already uh, in the making. It's just a matter of time. Uh, we're just praying, and uh, we're the people of God that are called by his name, and, and we know how to humble ourselves, amen, because humility is the key to prayer. Uh, when you go before God, you have to humble yourself because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yes. And so that's the key to God hearing your prayer. Uh, he says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Amen. Pray continually. We don't want to stop praying. Amen. Amen. It's, it's so much that we, uh, as God's people, need to pray for uh, because we have a relationship with the Lord. We know the Lord. Uh, and so who better can get a prayer through for our country and for the world? Amen? Amen. And he said, if we do that, humble ourselves, pray, seek his face. Amen. That's an urgency to seek his face. Turn from our wicked ways. Amen, and, and that means holiness, pursue holiness, because the word of the Lord says uh, that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And so that is turning from wickedness, turning from anything not like God is holiness. And then he said, then will I hear from heaven, and then will I forgive the sins of the people, and then I will, somebody say, heal the land. And, and, and that's what we need, a healing. Hallelujah. We need a physical healing, these bodies, and then we need the land, the United States of America, Asia, Europe, uh, all Africa, um, all of the continents of the world. We need God to heal us, heal the land, and he's going to do it. Thank you. In God's own time, in God's own time, he will do it. And uh, so we are just thankful uh, that the Lord is with us and we have that encouragement and we have that confidence in the Lord and we know that he has not forgotten us. He is he hears our prayers, and we're going to continue uh, to seek his face, continue uh, to ask him what we will. And the word of the Lord says, ask, and you shall uh, be given. Seek, ye shall find, knock, and the door will be open unto you. You have not because you what? Ask not. Amen. And that word ask, usually in theology, is reference to prayer. Uh, when you're praying, you're asking God. You're communicating with the Lord. Uh, and, and so that's what we do. He's our Father. We are his children. He loves us. We love him. That's the relationship. Uh, and uh, he will answer our prayers. God bless you on tonight, and we hope that yesterday was a good day uh, for you. We know it was a good day for the children. Amen? 
because they didn't go to school. Uh, amen. They were commemorating and celebrating uh, the uh, birthday of the Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. and the uh, things that he accomplished on the side of human rights. It wasn't just civil rights, uh, but it was human rights because when he was killed, assassinated there at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, he was there uh, for the garbage workers' strike. The garbage workers were striking, trying to get better wages, trying to get better benefits, and he went to Memphis. He was told not to go, but he said that he was going to go, that they needed him, and the garbage was just piled up in Memphis, just piled up. So he went to Memphis, and that's where he met his death uh, there uh, trying to help the garbage workers. And so it was human rights. He was an advocate of human rights. Uh, and, and so uh, we are so thankful that the Lord gives us people like that, people of that caliber uh, in our world, uh, self-sacrificing people, people that um, put their own lives in jeopardy uh, for the sake of humanity. And uh, I really believe he knew he was going to die. And, uh, you know, uh, he, was, he was born the same year as my mother, 1929. And so... If he lived, he would have been 92. And so he, he said longevity has its place, uh, but he had been to the mountaintop, and he had seen the what? He had seen the promised lands. And he said, I may not get there with you. So he knew uh, that the possibility was there, that he was, his life was going to be cut short, uh, I can remember the day, I can remember it well, uh, when it came over the loudspeaker, I was in high school, uh, and it came over the loudspeaker that the, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. has been assassinated. And uh, it was quite a uh, shock, quite a shock. I believe he was right at 39 years uh, old when it happened. And so uh, he didn't have longevity. Uh, but he did so much in those years. Those, uh, those 39 years, he accomplished so much. And that's letting us know uh, that it's not about really how long you live. It's about what you do during the time that the Lord gives you on this earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's, that's what it's all about. It's not because a lot of people live long. I think the last, uh, the oldest World War II veteran, African-American gentleman, passed this past week, and he was 112, uh, and uh, he looked, looked good. He was upright, and, uh, and, and uh, he had that expression on his face. I told my wife, uh, he had an expression on his face like he was getting ready to take care of business. <laughs> 112. And so uh, that's a long life. Amen. But I, I, and I don't know him personally, but uh, very few people have accomplished what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. accomplished uh, uh, in his short life. So I, I'm sure in that 112 years, he probably didn't accomplish half of the things. Uh, he was the youngest man to ever receive the Nobel Peace Prize and the money from the Nobel Peace Prize, even though his, his family was not rich, did not have much money, and I've been there to their home in Atlanta. My father took us there two or three times. We've been there to the church, the old church, because now it's a big church. Uh, Ebenezer is a big church now, and the pastor is a U.S. senator uh, that pastors the church that uh, uh, Dr. King pastor and his father uh, pastor and you, the old church you go in and you can see the organ there that his mother was playing when the assassin came in and killed her 
and, uh, and you can still see the holes in the organ. Uh, it's preserved, it's a memorial. Uh, and so um, not just him, but his family, all of them were together. Coretta, his wife, um, great woman. You see her in her face and in, in the marches. She was right there with him, marching, even though she had those children. Uh, let's see, I think two boys and three girls, five children. She's got four children, two, two. Sister Burrell says two, two. Um, but she was there marching with him. And uh, uh, she was an advocate of human, for human rights also, and a great woman. And his granddaughter, I got a chance to hear her yesterday, and she gave a speech, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter. And she was very, very eloquent. And she was speaking about the voting rights uh, bill that has passed the, the House of Representatives and now is in um, a stall mate in the Senate because of the filibuster. And uh, they, they, the filibuster means they're trying to kill the bill by not voting on it. And so the, and, and so the great divide is there in the Senate and, and so forth. And she <laughs> she's called off the names of certain people and said, you need to vote for that bill. And so it was, it was very, very uh, touching uh, to see his granddaughter uh, doing what her grandfather did. Amen? Uh, so we're praying for the King family. It's a, I know they have a heavy load. And you can look at his son, uh, Martin Luther King uh, III. You can look at the stress on his face uh, and, and, and the burden that he is, he is under. Uh, so uh, God knows all things. We're going to, uh, I just thought I'd mention that because it was a great holiday, a great celebration, uh, and many people uh, don't really know much about African American history. And uh, I taught, I was blessed to be able to teach African American history for a number of years um, when I taught at Muskegon Heights High School. Uh, and I tried to blend it into American history when I taught American history uh, and world history. I tried to blend it in uh, when the schools that I worked in did not have African American studies. So I was just trying to uh, uh, just kind of inter uh, weave it with the curriculum. Uh, so thank God for the national holiday. All right. Uh, can we say gather yourselves together? That is our subject, and also we'll be talking about our crown of rejoicing. Our crown of rejoicing, a cause for rejoicing. What is your crown of rejoicing? What uh, uh, will cause you to, to break forth in singing? And, 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 and what will cause you to, to rejoice in the Lord? What is your crown uh, of rejoicing? And so we'll deal with that, and it's on the same wavelength as gathering yourselves to, together, uh, which basically is a subject which entails uh, all of the nations of the world, uh, people of every uh, kindred, nation, and tongue uh, having an opportunity to be saved. That's the will of God, is that every nation, uh, it goes further, we're dealing with the Jews and the Gentiles, because biblically there's only two races of people, Jews and Gentiles. And biblically, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And so you have people trying to be a Jew because they don't want to be a Gentile. Uh, they call them proselytes. Uh, and you have others uh, that uh, because, try to be a Jew in some other way because they don't want to be labeled as what? A Gentile. Uh, but 
Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in his death, he broke down the middle wall of partition, uh, which separated people. Uh, there's no more um, male, female. There's no more uh, bond free, no more uh, Greek, Scythian, but all now are one. Can the church say man? And, and, and that is all done by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't just look to the cross and say, I believe that Jesus died for me. But you have to apply the work of Calvary to your life through water baptism in his name and the receiving of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking of the tongues of the Spirit of God give utterance, which uh, is called the Comforter in St. John chapter number 14. Uh, and the Comforter, he said, Jesus said, he was going to send in his name. So the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, self-same thing, God sent in his name, the Son's name. What's the Son's name? Jesus. Most people, uh, they uh, know the Son of God's name. Uh, but God had a saving name. And you know, there's a lot of names for God in the Old Testament. And each one of those names are significant. They have a meaning. But his saving name is what? Jesus. Amen. That's his saving name. He said, Jesus said, I came in my father's name. That's what he told Philip. Amen. And and because uh, Philip was talking about show us the Father. <laughs> and he said, he said, You've been with me this long, Philip, and you don't know that I and my father are what? Are one. When you seen me, you seen who? You seen the Father. Hallelujah. And, and uh, uh that was an education to uh to Philip. Uh but Jesus was was talking about that saving name, that he came in his father's name. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter number. We'll start there with chapter number 52 in Isaiah. And we're going to read there. Two verses, seven and eight. If you have it, say amen. amen. Isaiah, the eagle eye prophet. Amen. That's what they call him, the eagle eye prophet, because uh, most of the book was prophetic, and he spoke about things to come, things that were. Uh, 700 years down the road. And so they called him the eagle eye prophet. Like the eagle, he soars. Uh, he can fly above the storm. He can fly into the eye of the storm. And uh, the storm is below him. He's looking down over this storm. And he can see if he wants, if he's hungry, he wants some uh, prey something to eat, to kill. He, he doesn't eat. He's not a scavenger. The eagle's not a scavenger. He's not a crow. Can I get an amen? Uh, amen. Uh, he, he, he likes his stuff alive. <laughs> and he can be way up in the heights of the heavens, and he, and he has ability. His sight is so keen, he can look all the way down and see that whatever it is hopping around, a rabbit, a squirrel, whatever it is that he, he, he has a taste for, and uh, he can see it and come, just come down, and, and, and those talents come out and pick it up. And, and, and uh, it's a very majestic bird. I've been face-to-face -face with one on the golf course. Hit my ball, and I was going to my ball, that hit my next shot, and 
in my golf cart, and I was going, and then I, um, I saw it looked like a, a, a bird where my ball was, the area my ball was in. But I said, no, it can't be no bird that big. And the closer I got, I said, that is a bird. And, and uh, he, was, he was looking at me, and I was looking at him, and I said, you can have the ball. <laughs> and after a couple minutes, he just took a couple steps, poop, poop, and just took off. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very majestic, majestic bird. Powerful, powerful wings. He doesn't flap his wings. Uh, you know, like the little birds, they flap, they, they flap, 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 flap. The, not the eagle. The eagle, he, his, the, he glides on the wind. And, uh, and that allows him to just soar above uh, everything. He just opens those wings up and just ride the wind. All right, seven and eight. Let's read those together, Isaiah 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Can we say amen? So we are, can rejoice together. We can sing together because we know that the Lord is going to bring again Zion. Uh, and, and we're striving for that purpose. That's what we're striving for uh, is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is soon to come. So that's why we're gathering ourselves together. Hebrews 10 says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Let's go to Genesis now, chapter number 12. He said not to forsake the, the assembling of yourselves together is the matter of some is. But Let's come together the more as we see the day approaching. That's the day of his coming. Amen. So we know that some are not going to gather themselves together. And this subject is, is, is not just talking about us coming to our local churches, local assemblies, uh, which are our spiritual families, uh, because we'll be spending eternity together, uh, uh, the church. Amen. So if, we, if you can't get along with people down here, uh, no sense in you thinking that you're going up there uh, because you, you've got to get along down here. With who? Everybody. You've got to endeavor as much as life within you, you have to uh, 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 live peaceably among all men. Yeah, you have to, you, you've got to do your part. And, and God will help you in the rest of it. Can I get an amen? <laughs> you know, sometimes you do your part and it don't seem like it's enough, and then the God, God will just intervene. And, and, and the person will wish that they had a, got along with you because the word of the Lord says, touch not mine what? Anointed. Somebody say, that's me. Uh, amen. He said, touch not mine anointed. That, somebody said, that's me. That's me. And, and do my prophets no harm. But folk need to, they, they, have to, they better leave you alone. I, I tell people all the time, you better leave. If, if it's a child of God, a professing person that's trying to live for the Lord, doing everything they can on the side of the Lord, you better leave them alone. You don't want that. 
<laughs> Amen. So God is for unity. God is for us coming together. Genesis chapter 12. Because some people use this scripture. And we're going to read 1 through 5 here in 12th chapter. And then we're going to read 8 through 15 uh, in the 13th chapter. And some people use this scripture to say that God is for separation. You'd be surprised uh, because people that don't rightly divide the word of truth, uh, they don't get the truth. Everything in the Bible is not truth unless it's what? Rightly divided. And, and some people will take a scripture out of context and another scripture and they'll say, uh, God is for separation. They say, we, you, 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 uh, this church should be this way, this church should be this way, and, and, and God doesn't want the, ch the, the, the church's mixing. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I grew up, in a, I grew up in an integrated church, highly integrated. The church that I grew up in, the church that my, pa my pastor, my father pastor for almost 50 years, it had more or just as many Caucasians as it did African Americans. So that was the kind of upbringing. The, the, the young lady, well, she was in her 60s that I told you passed from COVID. I told you Sunday morning she passed from COVID. That's a, a, a Caucasian young lady that we were raised up in the church with. And uh, her and they, her mother was an evangelist in the church. At one time, she was over the Ministerial Alliance, Virginia Lenore, uh, and she had 10 children. And, uh, and uh, we were very close with that family. Her husband drove the bus for the church. He was over the bus ministry. And they had three brand new buses, a blue bus, a red bus, and then they had another one. I forget the color of that of them, but I know the blue and the red, they bought both of them at the same time, brand new. And he was over the bus ministry. And boy, you talk about uh, a uh, lofty position. And people were envying him, and people were jealous uh, because uh, he was over the bus ministry. And boy, did he make it into a ministry. He knew how to make it into something special. And, and uh, 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 it's really something when people put all they have into whatever it is, the vocation is, that God has called them to. And, and it makes other people, they can take a, something that nobody even wants, and they can turn it into something that everybody is trying to get. <laughs> and so some people use scriptures uh, to separate. They try to, they try to use scriptures to, to say God's for separation. God wants separation. And we know God doesn't want separation. God wants us to gather ourselves together. Let's read Genesis 12. Genesis 12, if you have it, say amen. Let's read the first five verses here. How does it read? Now the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation. These are the four promises given to Abraham. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee, and in thee, Abram, shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Okay, so he was not sent like Abraham. Abram was sent, but Lot just went. Can I get an amen? And Lot went with him, and Abram was what? Seventy and five years old 
when he departed out of Haran. So he was, he was fulfilling the first thing, which was to get out of thy country. Uh, so he was uh, 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Verse 5. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son. So that was his nephew. And all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And all the people said, Amen. Now let's read in the 13th chapter of Genesis. Let's go to verse number 8. All right, let's read a few verses through verse number 15. All right. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we are brethren. Read. Is it not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself. So here people try to say that God is for separation. It is, he says, separate thyself. Read. I pray thee from me, if thou will take the left hand, then I will take the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes. And beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That was the direction of Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. That's what it looked like. Like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Verse 11. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they what? Separated themselves, the one from the other. Let's read through verse 15. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after Lot was separated from him. Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Can the church say amen? So Abram have been commanded by God, we read that in Genesis 12, have been commanded by God to leave his kindred, and this he had not yet done. He left the country. It said that he had to leave his kindred, and he had to get out of his father's house. So he was commanded to leave his kindred, and this he hadn't done yet. He was only fulfilling the portion uh, of uh, leaving that country and his father's house. And so this is not an example of separation since Lot never uh, was included in God's plan. Lot never was included in the plan that God had for Abraham. Go to Isaiah 51. God is not for separation. Because there was a great uh, turmoil between the herdsmen after they had gained so much wealth and the herdsmen of Lot were not getting along with the herdsmen of Abraham. And so for the sake of peace, 
Abram said, I think you all need to go your way. <laughs> and we'll go our way. But he wasn't trying to separate. It wasn't about separation. Because God didn't call Lot. He sent Abram. He sent Abraham, not Lot. Isaiah 51. Let's read verses 1 and 2. Let's read 1, 2, and 3. What, is, what did they say? Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock from which ye have are hewn, and to the hole of the pit from which ye are dig. Somebody say, that's us. Because he dug us out of the hole, a miry clay, and he put our feet on the what? Rock to stay. Verse 2. Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, who bore you, for I called him what? Alone. God didn't call Lot. He never called Lot. He never sent Lot. He says, for I called him alone. God called Abram alone. The blessing was, uh, 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 was to come through Abraham. And, I, and blessed him. I called him alone, verse 2, and blessed him. And what? And increased him. Hallelujah. This is the solidarity of God. Amen. Uh, 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 God called him alone, and God blessed him alone, and God increased him, somebody say, alone. And Lot went with him. Verse 3 says, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness shall be found in it, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Can we say amen? And so that's our crown of rejoicing. That's, that's what we're singing for. The Lord is going to comfort Zion. Hallelujah. And, 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 and we have uh, proof that God uh, desires for all of us to come together. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Galatians chapter number two. And we can see an example of this very same thing that God uh, uh, wants us to be together. Uh, let no man deceive you. Let no man uh, separate you. Let no man scatter you. God wants us to be together. Jesus said, that if they're not gathering with me, they're scatter, scattering abroad. So that's not the spirit of God, uh, to scatter folk and separate folk. And I tell people all the time, uh, uh, it's good when we can come together and reason together and worship together. Amen. Hallelujah, especially those of us that are of light faith. Can the church say amen? amen? We ought to be able to come together. We ought to be able to worship together. We ought to be able to reason together. We ought to be able to shout together. Galatians chapter 2. Let's see what uh, Paul here, he's, he, this is a, a Gentile church, and uh, let's see what Paul is saying to this church uh, concerning this subject matter. And we, we, to conserve on the time, I was going to read quite a few verses, but we'll just read verses 11, 12, and 13. All right? But when Peter, this is verse 11, Galatians 2 and 11, but when Peter was come to Antioch, and remember Antioch was the uh, uh, first church that was a Gentile church really established, and that was the first place where they were actually called Christians. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul said what? I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Okay, so Paul said Peter was to be blamed. Verse 12. For before certain men 
came from James. That was the mother church in Jerusalem. James, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, the pastor of the mother church in Jerusalem. Certain uh, brethren, certain men came from that church. Did He did eat with the Gentiles. So before these men came, these Jewish brothers came from the mother church. Uh, uh, he was eating with the Gentiles, talking about Peter. He did eat with the Gentiles. Read. But when they were come, the brothers from the, his, the Jewish brothers, when they came, what does it say? He, he what? Withdrew and separated himself, fearing them who were of the circumcision. Circumcision means those of the uh, 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 Jews that came from the mother church. So for some reason, uh, uh, you have to be real. Somebody say, be real. And that means be, be real all the time. See, see, some people, they, they one way when they with this group, you all don't hear me, and they, then they another way when they with this group. But, but somebody, in the, somebody said they're two faces. That's what somebody in the congregation just said. Uh, but, uh, and the word of the Lord says, a double-minded man is unstable in what? All, All of his way. You need to be real. You know, you shouldn't be ashamed uh, uh, to be with certain people when other people come around. Can the church say amen? So he was to be blamed. Peter was to be blamed because he was eating. And remember now, the Jews uh, 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 thought the Gentiles uh, were dogs. They didn't think they could be saved. And, and they called them the uncircumcision. The Jews were called circumcision, <laughs> and they called the Gentiles uncircumcision. And so you weren't even supposed to uh, uh, fellowship with the Gentiles. You weren't supposed to eat with the Gentiles or anything. But Peter, uh, uh, he was eating with the Gentiles. It was, everything was fine. But when the, bro the brothers of his own nationality, ethnicity, came down from Jerusalem, he withdrew himself and separated himself. Can you imagine how the poor Gentile brothers felt when he withdrew himself and separated himself? They thought that they were all one. They thought they had solidarity. And here he is, a leader. You know, uh, uh, God need to deal with leaders first. Leaders need to get themselves together. Can I get an Amen. He withdrew himself, and he was afraid of them who were uh, 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 of the circumcision. Verse 13. And the other Jews, because of what the leader did, because of what Peter did, and the other Jews, what? Disassembled in like manner with him. Insomuch that even Barnabas also was carried away with their, uh, uh, my Bible says, hypocrisy. <laughs> Barnabas also was affected. Let's read verse 14. That's a, a good verse. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, Paul says, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews? Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? That's a key verse. Can the church say amen? So here, uh, 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 Peter was to blame, not for fornication, not for adultery, not, that, not those kind of sins, but he was to be blamed for separation. You can, you can say discrimination. You can say prejudice. You can say respect the person. He was to be blamed. He, I'm talking about gathering yourselves together. He affected everybody else. If we could get the leaders together, can the church say amen? He had formerly fellowship with the Gentiles, but those who came from James caused him to separate for fear of the, of the circumcision. The result 
was he withdrew, separated. But when you withdraw, it never stops there. When a leader, you know, uh, 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 sometimes I can remember we, at some of the conventions when we had different presiding bishops of the Pentecost Symbols of the World, and they would say during their administration, they want to bring all the apostolics what? Back together. That would be a part of the agenda is to bring all of the apostolic brethren worldwide back together. And so they would be inviting the leaders from other organizations uh, to come and, and worship together uh, with, at the PAW convention. We'd even have maybe a speaker from one of the other uh, groups to come and so forth, they did, uh, made a great effort. They did it under uh, James A. 1 Johnson's administration. They did it under uh, uh, um, Paul A. Bowers, Paul Alexander Bowers, his administration. They did it under uh, Norman L. Wagner's administration, trying to bring all of the brethren together. And sometime you would have the head of the organization to come and preach, and none of the people would even come. Now, who ever heard of that? You coming, but no, nobody else is coming. I think that's speaking real loud. <laughs> and so he calls other Jews to disassemble likewise, and so much that even Barnabas uh, was carried away with the dissimulation. So who was to be blamed? Not just Peter only, but the other Jews, they were to be blamed. And also Barnabas, he was to be blamed. Amen. All of them were to be blamed. Let's go to St. Luke chapter number 6. All of them were to be blamed. Hallelujah. Because the Lord wants us to come together. And I tell you, uh, uh, Zephaniah says we need to gather ourselves together before the, the great day of the wrath or the anger of God. If we're not going to do it now, when are we going to do it? We need to do it before the coming of the Lord, before the catching away of the bride of Christ, the church, and before the tribulation period. This is the time Amen. for us uh, 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 to uh, uh, not just witness to our friends, our family, can I get an amen? Our little group, but it's time for us to open the gate wide <laughs> and witness to everybody, everybody that we come in contact with. Let them know about the love of Jesus. Jesus loves you. And what? And I do too. Jesus loves you and I do too. St. Luke chapter number Amen. 6. Let's read verses. Uh, we're trying to cut time now. Let's read verses 22 and 23. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. St. Luke 6, 22 and 23. Blessed are ye. When men shall hate you and when they shall separate from you, from, uh, from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Can we say man? So some will separate from us because of the life that we live. Some will hate you for the life that you live. But don't feel like because they pull away from you because you're saved, because you got saved. One of the hardest things for a new saint and probably, I don't want to uh, give a percentage, but it's a high percentage of them that don't make it after they get saved is because 
they won't separate. See, see, a lot of times people, when they get saved, people want them to come. They, they don't want them to stay saved. They want them to come back over to the side of what God delivered them from. And so they need a lot of prayer, especially if there's someone that may not be of the same ethnicity or something of that nature. They need a lot of support, and they need a lot of prayer because God is not for separation. Can the church say amen? God is not for discrimination. God is not for respect the person. God is not for uh, 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 any of those things. And once you get received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you had a problem before, God should deliver you from that. You should be delivered. We're getting ready to go into consecration. And, and, and uh, we're going to have three days of, of consecration coming up, uh, January, January. Uh, 31st, February 1st, and February 2nd from midnight the night prior to 4 p.m. the next day. And, and uh, that's a good thing, you know, to put out there on the table and say, Lord, uh, I got a problem in this area. I need healing. I need deliverance. I need you to help me because I, I don't want to be left behind because uh, Peter had to get it together. <laughs> Peter had to get it together. Uh, uh, and he got it together. He got it together. But but if, at one time he had a little problem. And I just thank God for my upbringing, my personal upbringing. And and uh, when I was growing up in, in my neighborhood, uh, I never had any African American friends. I was the only. My family was the only African American family in the whole school system. So I never had any other African Americans in any classes from elementary, junior high, high school. None were in my graduating class. I was always the only one. So all my friends were Caucasians. I spent the night over their house. They spent the night in my house. So I, I, I was raised a certain way so I didn't have problems with color. And I'm going to tell you something. You get a chance. They got a chance to know me and my family just like I was getting the chance to know them. And sometimes the problem is people don't ever get a chance to what? They never get a chance to know anybody. They get old and have never, ever spent any time with anybody other than people that are like them. And it's, it's a problem. And, and uh, you know... I, I had my problems going through the school system. I could tell you some stories, you know, uh, name calling and all that stuff. I, I could I could really tell you a whole lot of stuff. But and and as I had to fight my way through elementary school, but by the time I got to junior high and high school, all my white friends fought my battles for me. If you called me a name, you had to deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> they say, uh -uh, you ain't going to call Carlton that. <laughs> it, was, it was on. So, uh, 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 you know, we are supposed to love one another. What, uh, you know, saints are supposed to love one another. Can I get an amen? amen? The crown of rejoicing. You'll understand a little bit better when I finish this class. What is your crown of rejoicing? During your saved life, what is your crown of rejoice? What is your what is the highest height? What is what is the thing that you sing and rejoice uh, 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 and praise God for because He allows you to do it during your saved life? Or do you have a crown of rejoicing? Everybody should have a crown of rejoicing. I'm gonna quote these scriptures and then and then we're gonna turn to. Uh, 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 um, Ephesians chapter 2 but Ephesians says he has quickened us together 
In verses 4 and 6, he's raised us up together, and he's made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. He has quickened us together. That means those of us that were dead in our trespasses and sins, have he now quickened or made alive? See, before we got saved, we were dead. They got a movie called uh, The Walking Dead. And people love that thing, series. People walking around like zombies and arms falling off and, and all that kind of stuff. And they just love watching that. Well, that was how we were before the Lord saved us. We didn't see ourselves that way. <laughs> we thought we was all that in the bag of chips. But he has quickened us together, raised us up together, and, 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 and caused us to, made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can we say amen? And when he comes back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he's going to catch us up together. The rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4. He's going to catch us up together. We're going up what? Together. together to meet the Lord where? In the air. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. He's going to cause us to live together. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 10, read verses 1 through 11. Uh, uh, he's going to let us live together with him in eternity. We're going to be living together throughout eternity. That's why we're gathering ourselves together down here, because we're going to be together up there. Can I get an amen? amen? Saints everywhere, gathering themselves together. That's our crown of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go back. We read something from Isaiah uh, 52. I know I called uh, Ephesians 2, but let's look at Isaiah 52. I want to read verses 8 and 9 in that same chapter. We read couple other verses there, but I want to read 8, 9, and 10, excuse me. I'm almost finished for the night. I want to particularly read verse 10. The Lord have made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall what? See the salvation of our God. All of the ends of the earth. The Lord have made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Now, a lot of the Jews didn't accept that. You know, sometimes, uh, 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 you know, people want separation. Human nature sometimes being what it is, uh, people can't rejoice when somebody else is included or when somebody else uh, uh, benefits. They can only rejoice when it's their group. So here Isaiah is saying, he's admonishing them, and he's saying that, not just Israel. Yes, Israel should rejoice because in, the, in, in verse number 9, it says, Break forth in the joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord have comforted his people. He have redeemed who? Jerusalem. So they have a cause to rejoice. Israel is admonished to, to rejoice and sing for the redemption that will come to them. But that same revelation is that the redemption is also going to come to all nations. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Now, that's cause to rejoice. Amen. That God has no respect to person. Amen. Amen. But they have, now let's go to Ephesians 2. But some of them could not rejoice in that. See, and that's why Peter, you know, the brothers come down from Jerusalem and, and uh, you know, they, they caused him to separate himself. 
he could no longer fellowship and rejoice with the Gentiles. That wasn't the will of God. Let's read verses 11 and 12 here in Ephesians chapter 2. This is in a Gentile church. Read. Wherefore, remember that ye being, he's reminding the Gentiles, ye being in, in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, you will call that by them which called themselves circumcision in the flesh, those are the Jews, made by hands, verse 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Remember that, Gentiles, that was your condition. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who uh, uh, once were far off are made what? Nigh by the blood of Christ. Can the church say amen? Now, Peter, even though on the day of Pentecost, Peter in that message, he said, this promise is unto you, it's unto your children, it's unto uh, them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. But Peter actually believed that the afar off meant Jews because he hadn't met up yet with uh, um, uh, the Samaritans. He hadn't yet uh, met up with the Italian band Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. The Samaritans was seven years after Pentecost and Cornelius was nine years after Pentecost and they still were separated. It wasn't until two more years, 11 years after Pentecost, at the stoning of Stephen, that they began to scatter. Not the apostles, they never left Jerusalem. And we'll read scripture on that, but the others began to scatter and go to other places, and that's how the gospel got to other people other than the Jews. But it took 11 years after Pentecost for the gospel, the truth of the gospel, to get to other nations. Can the church say amen? So he is saying, but now you Gentiles in Christ Jesus, ye who uh, sometimes or once were far off, are made nigh or near now by the blood of Christ. Can the church say amen? He's acknowledging that the Gentiles are now a part of the church. Yes, he's reminding them of their former past and who they were, but now he is saying that you're now no longer strangers. You're no longer aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now God has accepted you into the beloved. Can the church say amen? So even some of the apostles didn't understand the purpose uh, of God and what God was. We'll read one more scripture, then we'll go for the night. Acts 1 and 8. I know you all can quote that, can't you? Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. We, could, we probably could just quote that verbatim without even reading it. But just for the sake of somebody that may not be able to quote it by heart, we'll go there because this is a foundational scripture for the apostolics. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I want to deal with it a little bit here. All right? Verse 8, Acts of the Apostles. Of course, the author is Luke. Um, and this is somewhere around 30 years after the death of Christ. Uh, and we'll read beginning with verse number 8. 
in Acts chapter number one. What does it say? But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in the first place was where? Jerusalem. And then in all Judea. And in Samaria. And then unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So this was uh, what Jesus wanted for his apostles. This is Jesus talking. And he's, he's commissioning his apostles to evangelize. And he's telling them, you're going to receive power. When you re after you receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive power. And then you can be my witnesses. You can be witnesses unto me. And these are the things in the places that you're going to witness. You're going to witness uh, uh, unto me both in Jerusalem, all Judea, in, uh, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But they still hung around Jerusalem. Some people say, well, you know, uh, the church that I'm in, it's a, it's a four-wall ministry. I say, what does that mean? They, that means they're not going to go outside those what? Four Them four walls. <laughs> but God wants us to go outside of the four walls. You go into the uttermost parts of the earth. Go wherever I lead you. Where, that's, that's what you get the Holy Ghost for. Holy Ghost is just not uh, uh, for you to feel good. And I mean the Holy Ghost make you feel good. When you, when you have the real Holy Ghost and, and, and when you get in the presence of the Lord and, 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 and there's a, uh, the spirit of rejoicing and praise and worship, I tell you, it, it, you feel good. Forget about all your problems and uh, uh, you just you just in in a in a special heavenly place in Christ Jesus. You you didn't feel good, and all of a sudden now you don't you don't even feel the pain. Uh, you you're not worried about nothing. You just it's just the Holy Spirit is real. Hallelujah! Can the church say hallelujah? Yet they stayed home, close to home in Jerusalem for some seven years, before Philip went to Samaria. And that he was not one of the apostles, but his labors were accepted by them as they sent. Philip wasn't one of the apostles, but they accepted his labor because they sent Peter and John there to lay hands on the, the converts there to consummate the work there so that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, the Samaritans, uh, you know, they had some Jewish blood. Uh, but and then it was two years later that God sent uh, Peter to the Gentiles, to Cornelius. And so we know what happened there. Uh, <laughs> the Lord actually, uh, uh, he had dealt with Cornelius. This is Acts chapter 10. The angel came into Cornelius' home, stood in his home, and told him to send he said, your arms have went up as a memorial before God and because he was a praying man and he, was, he gave much alms to the people. And, it went, and the angel came and told him God was well pleased. And he said, uh, I want you to send uh, to, I believe it was Joppa for Peter. He said, and he gave him the address. The angel gave the address. He said he's there by the sea uh, with uh, Simon the Tanner. The angel gave him the address. Said, send those men there. Peter is there. He sent the men there. And while the men was on the way there, Peter was on the rooftop and uh, resting up there. And he went to sleep or went into a trance, so the Lord gave him a vision. He was preparing him 
to go back with these brothers that was coming from Cornelius' house. Because if he hadn't given him that vision, he wouldn't have went with them. Because he would have had a problem with them Gentile brothers. So he let the sheet down. It was a vision of a sheet coming down by the four corners. And Peter was in a trance. He saw the sheet coming down. And in the sheet was what animals that were unclean considered to be unclean by Jews. It said there was creeping things in there, four-footed beasts in there. And, and, and then the Lord told Peter, said, rise, Peter, slay and eat. And Peter said, oh, no, I can't eat that. That's, that's, that, that's, not, that's, that's unclean stuff in that sheet that the Lord had brought down by the four corners from heaven. Then the Lord told him, said, don't you call what I have cleansed common or unclean. But do you know the Lord had to repeat that three times? He had to let that sheet down. You read it in your own, Acts chapter 10. He had to let that sheet down three times to convince him Amen. that if he wasn't talking about animals, he was talking about people. And by the time the Lord finished with him, then it was a knock on the door. It was the brothers from Caesarea, and they came in, and they, and, and they said that they were from Cornelius, and he, and he had sent for them and everything. Now Peter was ready to go. But Peter also, he didn't just go by himself. He took six Jewish men with him. When he went to Cornelius' house, he took six Jewish men with him, and, and, and they went there, and of course you know what happened. He went there and preached Jesus to those people. And while he was preaching, and Cornelius had done the work, he had gathered all his family together in the house. And so when Peter came, he had an audience, and, and Peter preached to him. And while Peter was preaching, all of the folk in the house started speaking in tongues. And the six, and see, Peter brought the six brothers with him for a different reason. But God had them six Jewish men there so they could witness, along with Peter, that he was pouring out the Holy Ghost upon who? The Gentiles also. Because on the day of Pentecost, they were all Jews. So now they witnessed the Holy Spirit being poured out on these Gentiles. God was speaking loud. And he said, all right, I see what the Lord is doing. Uh, you, you better go and baptize these folk now. They got the Holy Ghost. They got the, the, uh, uh, a gift like as what we have. He commanded them that they baptize them in the name of the Lord. So God wants an integrated church. Amen. God wants his people to come together. God wants his people to be able to worship together with no fear. Peter was afraid. He wouldn't, when no, he was okay until them brothers came down from the mother church. Then he, they say he got scared. We'll pick up here next week. God bless you. Let's clap our hands and give the Lord a praise. Because they, they took him before the council in Jerusalem. <laughs> they took. They did not stop there. And the accusation was, you ate with them Gentiles. Yeah, we heard about you going down there, going on and, 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 and going to Cornelius' house and eating with them. They was going to deal with Peter. But the Lord blessed that the pastor, James, was able to resolve the situation because he, had, he was spiritual. He wasn't sensual. He had the mind of God. See, being spiritual means you know how to get the mind of God. And that's what we have to do. We have to get the mind of God when it comes down to these things. You, you can't be saying, well, I think, you know, you got to get God, God's mind, not your mind. That's right. Amen. I've heard a whole lot of folk talking about what they think. <laughs> 
Uh, that's not going to stand up what you think. Let's go to the word of God. Let's see what the word of God has to say in this matter. God bless you. If anyone have any questions, we'll take those. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments? Mother Moore, glad to have you here tonight. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. amen.